What's up everybody, welcome back. In today's video we are going to wrap up our character selection by adding character customization. So if we go to the character menu we can go to customize and for each character we can set different models and for each model we can set different skins. So uh, in this case the skins are named the same but that doesn't have to be. Oh, I have a little spelling error in there but um, so you can assign different skins for each model and different models for each character. Everything will load into the game and everything will replicate. So we're going to take a look at that. And if you enjoy the videos, please consider leaving a like. If you want to get your hands on my project files, uh, you can join the Discord and most of my projects will be available for free. Uh, this is what I would call a premium project and this has uh, quite a lot of time invested and is a bit more advanced. So uh, this will only be available for members. Uh, if you leave a small donation on my Ko-fi page, you get access to the premium projects as well. Uh, you don't have to become a monthly member or something, just a single donation of a few bucks and you will get access forever. So, uh, with those announcements out of the way, let's dive into the video. So, I did a little bit of preparation and I changed the materials on the Quinn model. So, the body color of all models is blue now and that's the material that we're going to change with our skins. And I did the same thing for the male model. So, I made uh, four materials with different colors and I set up uh, four meshes to use those materials. So, now I have two different models with four different colors and that's what we're going to use to work with. Um, now to start this off we need to create a structure and in that structure we're going to store all of the models and skins that are available for that character. So let's create a blueprint and then go to structure and I'm going to call this my uh, structure uh, model and skins. And let's make this structure first. So the first thing we're going to put in here is the actual model. So that's a skeletal mesh. Mesh. And then uh, we're going to set up the materials. So the first thing we're going to use is a boolean and I'm going to call that use skin zero. And I'll explain this in a little bit. Um, then the second one that we're going to need is skin zero. No. Skin zero uh, material slot. Material slot. Uh, that's an integer and this was a boolean by the way and then the third thing that we're going to add is a mapping and those are the actual skins so let's call this uh, skin zero skins and the first variable is a name and then we're going to turn it into a map and we can add a second variable and that will be a material instance select this one so uh, these three variables will set up uh, one material on a model. So if I would open up the model for one of these characters, uh, let me see, those are materials, there we go. So this model has two different materials and over here you can see they are in slots. So we have slot zero and slot one. So in here we can set up uh, how many slots we want to use for a material. If we enable the boolean we're going to use this slot and over here we can specify the actual slot that we want to use. And then in here we can uh, tie our skins to a name so we can give them names for in the menu. So as you can see our character has two material slots. So in here for now I'm going to just add two of them but you could add more of them and simply control them with the boolean. So uh, let me create three more variables and then the first one again is going to be use skin one. So turn this back into a boolean, so a single variable and then a boolean. And then the second one is the skin one material slot. And that was an integer, so single variable integer. And then this will be our skin map, so skin1 skins. And that's actually good to go. So we can save and close this down. 
And now we want to add this into a data table. But first of all, we want to create another structure. So let's go back to our character folder and create the character customization struct. So again, blueprints structure and then structure uh, character customization. So you could uh, choose to add this into the character info structure, but this uh, will be a pretty beefy struct with the models and the skins in there. So every time you would load it, uh, it would load all of those variables as well. So that's why I'm just going to separate them into two different data tables and I can only uh, load the ones that I need. So in this character customization struct, we are going to add a mapping again. And uh, let's call this something like uh, models and skins. So again, the first variable will be a name and then turn it into a mapping. And for the second variable, we're going to select the structure that we just created. So that's our models and skin struct. This one. And this is the entire structure. So now we can save and close this one down again. And from this structure, we're going to create a data table. So right click, go to miscellaneous and create a data table. Select the structure, so this will be our character customization struct. Click OK, and this will be the character customization table. And let's open this one up. So in here we can set up the models and the skins. Now let me grab my example quickly. There we go. So let's set up uh, one of the models. Uh, so let's create a new row in here and this will be Quinn Blue. So again, this will refer to the same row name as the character info structure. So make sure you match those up. And then in here we can add an element to our map. And one element will represent one model. So the first one that we're going to add is default. And then we can set up the default model. So that will be the blue Quinn model. And then we can set up the skins that we want to use. So we're going to use a slot or the first slot. And let me see. Uh, so I use the correct slot names. So we want to change the skins in slot one. So we're going to do slot one first. And then we're going to add one mapping. And the first skin will be the default skin again. And set it up to use your Quinn Blue material. So um, this is slot 1. So this will be material instance Quinn 2 Blue. Let me double check if I do that correctly. Yes, I do. And then you can add a second input to your mapping. And you'll notice if you want to add more at the same time, you will get an error because all of the keys in the mapping will need to have a different name. So make sure you rename it first and then you can add the next one. So this will be green, for example, and select my Quinn green material. So again, number two, and we're going to add all four of them. So purple and then the correct skin number two purple and the last one red and that will be quinn number two red so this is the first material slot for our model now we're going to set up the second one so select this one and this will actually be material slot zero and in here we need to add the same uh, skin names again so these need to match up so uh, it will know which materials belong together. So again, we're going to add the default one. And that's going to be uh, Quinn number one blue this time. And we actually want to make all of these blue. So if we look at the model, we have the legs and the arms and those will always be blue and we're only going to change the body color. So that's why we only change the slot one. We're going to change the material color and in slot zero, we're going to keep all of the colors blue unless the name we're going to enter. So the second one is going to be green, but we're still going to enter the blue material. 
And then we have purple and red. There we go. So this will tell the game that we have a default model with four different skins and those use two slots. So now we can add a second model for this blue character. So let's add a mapping and let's call this the male model. And then we can set this up again. So again, we need to set up the model and that will be the many model this time and then the blue one. So we're gonna use the first slot and uh, the skins are actually swapped with many. So in slot, uh, slot zero, we have uh, material number two and for Quinn that was the other way around. So make sure that we change the material in slot number zero this time. Double checking. Uh, expand this. Um, yeah, we want to change the materials in slot zero. So we're going to go to the customization table. This will be slot zero. Let's enter the first one and that's our default skin again. So this will be many blue and this will be skin number two. And then add the rest of them. So we have green. Many green and number two. Purple. Number two purple and the last one red. And this will be many number two red. And then we need to set up the second material slot. So this will be slot number one. And in here we're simply going to add all blue materials. So the default first. And that's going to be many number one blue. And then we can add this to all of the other ones as well. So we have green. Purple and red. And all of those have the blue material. So that's how we have our model set up. And we could continue to do the same for uh, the Quinn green, purple and red. But I'm not going to do that on video because this takes quite a lot of time. And I think you could get the hang of it. So let's save this and let's continue by actually setting up our customization widget. Let's open up our character menu widget and we're going to set up the character customization buttons. So I'm going to use a widget switcher for that. So let's create the border where all of our buttons are in and I'm going to right click and wrap it with a widget switcher. So this will allow us to switch, uh, switch between the widgets inside of it. So um, what we could do is simply grab this border and we can duplicate it. So we have two of them in here. And now let's select the duplicated border and I'm going to get rid of most of the buttons because we only need one button in here. So let me delete all of the other ones and I'm going to keep the back button. Delete the spaces as well. We don't really need them. So we have a border with a vertical box and the back button. And now inside this vertical box, I'm going to drop two new vertical boxes. So let me grab a vertical box, drop it on top of this one. So it will be inside this one and I'm actually going to move it above the back button. And this needs to be a variable. So I'm going to call this my vertical box models. And then make sure it's a variable. Then I'm going to duplicate it. Oh, make sure I have this selected, duplicate it. And this will be the vertical box for the skins. Now let me grab the widget switcher over here and this also needs to be a variable. So let's give it a proper name and that will automatically turn it into a variable. Um, for the size, I'm gonna set it to uh, 250 by 400 for now, uh, 400 and disable size to fit. So let me grab this back button over here and I want to align that to the bottom. So I'm gonna set this to fill and then align it to the bottom over here 
Now let's go to the second border that we created and in here I also want to align the back button to the bottom so again I'm going to set it to fill and then align vertically to the bottom. And for the vertical boxes we want to make sure that they fill up the rest of the space so we're going to set these to fill and the second one as well. And that should be good. So now inside these vertical boxes let's drop uh, something of a title so we're just going to drop some text on top of here and let's give that the same font so let's copy and paste it and this will be the box for the models and then do the same thing for the skins so let's Copy it and paste it in here and this will be our skins box. Oh really? There we go. So now if you would select the widget switcher over here you can set the active widget index and you can change between the widgets inside of it. So let's leave it uh, to zero by default and then we're gonna dive into the graph. Um, let me grab my notes quickly. So we don't really need to do a whole lot in here. Um, we can set up the back button. Uh, let me see. So if we grab our back button number one and then we're going to add an on clicked event. So if we want to go back from the character customization menu to the actual character menu, we need to set our widget switcher to index zero. So we're going to grab our widget switcher and set active index, set it to zero. And then I also want to resize it. So I'm going to grab this widget switcher again and I want to uh, get the slot as a canvas slot. So. Um, this one get slot as canvas slot and with this I can resize it so I can do set size and I want to set the size back to uh, 250 by 400 I think yeah 250 400 and then if we go back to the designer and if we are in the character part of the menu, we can duplicate our back button and drop it a little bit above the original back button. And this will be the button to enter our customization menu. So let's say button customization. And let's change the text in here. And then, well, that's a bit weird, eh? customize maybe something like that um, so if we go back to the graph then we can also grab that button so the button customization and get an on clicked event and let's duplicate this stuff and we want to set the active widget to number one and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so 250 by 550 and that's What's going to happen when we enter the customization menu? Um, okay, that's pretty much good to go. Now let's set up the actual button that we're going to use to drop inside of these vertical boxes. So let's save and compile this. And let's go back and create a new user interface widget blueprint. And this can be a user widget. So let's call this something like uh, widget blueprint customization button and open it up. Let me grab my example quickly. So it's a really simple widget. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is grab a button and just drop it on the slot in here on the canvas panel. That's not actually a canvas panel, but just drag it on here. And then we are going to add some text on top of the button. So the text needs to be a variable. So that's our button text. And let's enable the variable flag. And then for the actual button, I'm going to make it a little bit black like the rest of the button. So style, normal, and that's going to be the tint. 
and then 0.7 I think so something like this and our font is italic and then 20 I think so that's pretty much the entire button so we can go to the designer but first we want to make sure our button is a variable and it is so that's our button customization compile and let's go to the graph to set this up um, we need a few variables in here so the first one is going to be our character menu reference so let's get the widget blueprint character menu so that's a character menu no. widget blueprint character menu and then we're gonna add a boolean and that's called is model button turn it into a boolean and we're gonna add a name variable and that's the model name so a name and then we're gonna do the same thing for the skins so is skin button that would be a boolean and then we're gonna add another variable and that's the skin name and that's a name so we're going to use this button for both uh, models and skins so over here we can tell if we're going to use this button for a model or a skin so let me see uh, we can set up event construct in here that would be pretty simple so let's get rid of the other ones and then we're going to add a branch and we're going to check if we are a model button or not so let's grab is model button if we are we're going to set the text so grab the button text and we're going to set the text of our button set text and we're simply going to set it to the model name so we can plug it in here and it will turn it into a name or a text variable plug this into the group in so if we are not a model button then we probably are a skin button but let's make sure that we check it why not and then we can set the text to our skin name so let's copy and paste this plug it in here and let's grab our skin name and turn that into the text so that's the entire event construct and we can go back to set up the on clicked event later because first we need to set up the event for that um let's see what we could do is add our model name and our skin name to our player profile so uh, these are variables that we want to be able to store on our profile so we can save and load them and these will actually tell what model and what skin I have selected so let's go to our save data and open our player profile structure and in here I am gonna add my model name and my skin name so, so those are name variables And I actually noticed I do not have my health and stamina, etc. in here because I accidentally continued from the wrong project. But uh, that doesn't really matter for you guys. Um, so we have that set up in our player profile. Let's double check our player profile save game. So we need to recompile it to set the defaults. And for the defaults in here, I'm going to set them to the default model and the default skin. So simply type default and let's compile and save this and that should be good. Now we can set up uh, the character menu buttons and the graph stuff. So let's dive into that. So before we're going to set up our character menu, let's quickly open up our customization button again because I forgot something in the graph uh, where we added all of the variables. For all of them, we want to make sure that we set them to instance editable and also expose on spawn. So do that for all five of the variables that we added instance editable expose on spawn. So this will make sure that if we create the widget, we can actually set them on the node that creates the widget so this will create a pin for the variable on the spawn widget node 
So this is done. And now we can go into the character menu and set up some other stuff. So um, let's start setting up the open and close customization menu functions. So I'm going to create a function first and that's going to be open customization menu. And uh, it doesn't really need an input right away. So if we go back into the event graph, uh, we want to open the customization menu when we click this button, button customization. So I'm going to grab this and cut it from the graph and then I'm simply going to call my function in here and the first thing I'm going to do inside the function is paste these back in so switch to widget 1 and resize the actual widget then we want to grab our menu controller so let's grab the menu controller from the variables and we want to get the player profile from there so get the profile and split this so on the profile we currently have our model name and skin name stored. So first we're going to save this uh, in local variables so we can work with them a little bit easier. So let's promote our character row name to a local variable. Local character row name. And do the same thing for the model and the skin name. So local variables, local model name. And we have the local skin name. And plug everything in. There we go. Now, first let's grab the data table row. So let's drag off here and get a data table row. And we want to get it from the character customization table. And then we can plug in the local character row name. And we will get the correct information from this character. So drag off the out row and break the structure. So this will give us our model map. And we can store this as a variable as well. But this time not a local variable. So let's promote it to a normal variable. And this will be our models and skins map. That's fine. Plug it in here. Now from this mapping we can get all of the keys that are inside of the map. So if we drag off here and type keys, it will return an array with all of the keys inside the map. And that will actually return all of the model names. So if I open up the uh, structure, let me see, character customization. So I actually, oh, I need to open up the data table. Uh, this one so this will return default and mail so if you would add more models it will put all these model names inside this array so we have an array with all of our model names right now and let's promote this to a variable a normal variable not local and these are all my model keys all model keys so just to make sure a local variable only exists inside this function and you cannot use it anywhere else or uh, it won't exist anymore if the function ends. So that's why we want to use normal variables for this. So let's grab a for each loop and we want to loop through all of the model names. So we're going to get all model keys and plug it in here. And for each model name, we want to create a button and we have a widget for that. So let's drag off here and create our customization button widget, uh, create widget, obviously. And then we can select our customization button in here. So the owning player will be the menu controller reference. So we can just get it from our variables. The character menu is a reference to ourself because this is the character menu. And then uh, these are model buttons. So we can simply enable is model button. And for the model name, we can plug in the array element and ignore these ones because we don't need them right now. So uh, quickly, if I dive into the designer and switch to the other widget over here, so we have these vertical boxes and you can add uh, user widgets as well so over here we have user created widgets and i could drop in my customization button that we created and plug it into the vertical box in here 
and this would be what happens so you would actually create a button inside of this vertical box so that's what we're doing with the create widget so let's delete this over here so we have this widget created uh, first let's add it to an array so we have it stored later if we want to delete it or anything so we're going to promote this to a variable and these will be all customization buttons all customization buttons and then get rid of the setter over here and then we can turn it into an array then we're going to grab it again and we're going to add this outcome of the create widget to the array so we have the button stored in the array and then we're going to grab our vertical box for the models and we're going to add a child so this will actually put the button inside of the vertical box so we're going to grab the return value and plug it into the content pin and that's good to go now the only thing left to do is check if this is the actual button for the skin that we have selected because if it is then we want to make sure that it's highlighted and then uh, that we can't press it so let's grab a branch in here and we want to compare the model name from the array element so drag it off here is equal and compare it to the local model name so that's the model name that the character uh, or the player has selected plug it in here and if this is true we want to set the button so we can drag off the return value from the create widget again and we can get the button so the button is a variable on our button widget so this is the actual button on the widget and we can set the style and we actually have the active and default style stored in this widget so let's grab the active button style and plug it in and then disable the button so set and enabled and this will be false so that should be good and uh, this little loop will create all the buttons for all the models that are in our data table and then we want to make sure that we create the skin buttons uh, that belong to this model so we're going to continue from the completed pin in here and uh, first of all we need to find the correct mapping so we're going to drag in our models and skins map and we're going to do find and in here we can plug in the model name and this will return our skin mapping uh, so let's break the structure so this will give us the model and the skins available for this model and uh, let me double check Plug in the model name. Yeah, that should be good. So that's good to go. Oh, I don't want to close it down entirely. I want to go back to my character menu. So from the completed pin over here, we can store the skins from the structure in a variable again. So first let's grab all of the keys in here. So that will be all the names from the skins and promote this to a variable and these are all of the skin keys so if I go back into the character customization table we're gonna grab these four uh, names and those will be put in an array so for all of these skins we want to create a button so again we're gonna add a for each loop and plug in all of our skin keys so we can actually plug them in like this and then we want to create our widget again so create widget and that will be our character customization button so owning player is the menu controller and this will be a reference to ourself and then this time we are a skin button and we can plug in the skin name from the array element over here and then we want to do kind of the same thing so let's copy all of this stuff and paste it over here plug in the return value and we're going to add it to the same array so that's fine uh, we don't want to add it to the model box but we want to add it to the vertical box skins so let's replace that one for the content pin also plug in the return value uh, we want to compare the array element 
from the for each loop hope plug that in and compare it to the local skin name and then we want to plug in the button customization target into the return value again and set the button style active disable the button that should be fine so that's good to go and this should be all we need to do if we enter our menu so this will be the return pin and that will be the end of the function so compile and save this one and we can also set up the close function so let's create a function for that as well close customization menu customization menu and in here we actually want to do the same thing so let's go to the event graph and let's grab these nodes to set the widget switcher and resize it and from here we're simply going to call our function and in the function we're going to paste the nodes again so those are set up then we want to grab a for each loop and we want to plug in all of our customization buttons because we want to get rid of them for the next time we are entering the menu so for the loop body we're going to remove from parent and that will simply delete the widget and then we want to clear our array so let's grab it again here and clear it plug this into the completed pin so the array will be empty as well and then we want to do the same thing for our uh, model keys array and for the skin keys array so i think we can just plug them in no we can't so we need to get a clear node and make sure that we connect everything up uh, that still doesn't work okay like this then and we also want to clear our mapping for the models and skins so let's grab that as well and clear the map and also plug that one in so then we should have everything reset and good to go for the next time we enter the menu so let's return and that's done so next thing uh, we're going to set up the event for pressing a customization button before we set up the event for the customization button i want to take a look at the menu controller so let's go to the framework menu controller and in here we have a function called save selected character so first of all we want to make sure that we change this a little bit because in here we reset the profile uh, the model name and the skin name to none and that actually doesn't work so we need to reset them to default no and I can spell so default and this one to default as well so if we select a new character that will uh, first select the default skin and the default model for that character then we want to grab this function over here and duplicate it and we're gonna save the selected model and let me grab my notes quickly so in here what we want to do is plug in the model name into the setter over here and keep the skin name to default so if we pick a new model we're gonna set the model and we're gonna reset the skin to the default skin for that model for the input we can get rid of the character class and this won't be the character row name but this will be the model name so we need to plug in the input into the model name i'm sorry that's my bad and then we want to grab the other values from the getter over here so the copy over the name the character row name and the class and set the skin name to default so this is how it should end up and get the model name from the input like i mentioned so we can keep the rest of the function that's fine that will save it to our save game and then tell the server to update it or update our lobby character that is and then we're gonna copy this function another time and this will be save selected skin and for this one double check again so uh, we can change the input to the skin name and then make sure that we plug the input pin into the skin name and we can grab the model name from the getter over here so 
we're going to only override the skin name and get the rest from the existing uh, variables. And that's the save selected skin function. So compile and save that as well. And with these functions in place, we can go back to our character menu and set up the event for pressing the customization button. So let's go character menu, graph. So in here, we're going to add the event for clicking the customization button. So let's add a new function, not an event, my bad. Uh, and that's uh, customization button pressed. And we're going to need a few inputs in here. So let's create a boolean first. And that's is model button. And then we're going to need the model name. And then we're going to need a boolean again. And that's is skin button. And then we're going to need the skin name as well. So let's add that one. And then the second and the last one are skin, uh, are name variables. There we go. So first of all, we're going to grab a branch and we want to know if we are a model button. So if we clicked a button, we want to check if we have a button selected. And if we have, we want to make sure that we set that button back to the default style and re-enable it and set the button that we clicked to the active style and disable it. So that's what we're going to do first. So let's grab all of our customization buttons and we're going to get a for each loop with break. And plug this in here. This is for the true pin. And we want to know if we are a model button. So let's grab the array element and get is model button. Hook this up to a branch in here. And if we are a model button, we want to know what model button we are. So we want to get the model name. Get model name. And we want to compare this to the model name that we have on our player profile structure. So I'm going to grab my menu controller and get my player profile. And we can split it over here and just plug in the model name. So we're going to compare this equal to. And if that's equal to the model name on the button, then this would be the button that we had selected because we haven't saved our newly clicked model yet. So then we want to plug in the true pin to the break of the for each loop and that will stop looping and keep the current index and element at these pins. So what we're going to do then is drag off the array element and that will be the widget for the customization button. So we want to get the actual button variable. So get button customization and set the style for the button. Plug this into the completed pin and we're going to set it to the default button style. And then again drag off the button and set enabled and set it back to true. So that's good to go. Then we want to highlight the button that we just clicked. So again, we're going to grab um, this for each loop over here and we're going to grab the two compare branches. So copy them and paste them over here. Plug this in. So we're going to loop through all of the customization buttons. Plug this in the array element. So if we are a model button, that's good. Then we want to compare the model name from the button to the actual input pin from this event. So let's make sure we plug in the target to the array element again. And we're going to co compare this to the model name from the actual function. And I didn't set this to model name. There we go. Um, so if this is true, again, we're going to break the loop and that will give us the correct uh, index and element of this model button. So then we want to set this model button to be activated. So drag off here again and we're going to get the actual button variable and set this button to the active style. So set style, plug this in the completed pin and grab our active button style, plug it in here. And we're going to set the button to be disabled. So enabled is false and plug it in as well. So we took care of highlighting the buttons. Then we want to save the 
actual model. So let's grab our menu controller and we're going to call the save selected model function. Save selected model. And for the model name, we can grab it from the input pin of the actual function again. So that's this one. And plug it in over here. And now uh, if we select a new model, we want to update all of our skin buttons because this model might have different skins than the previous model that we had selected. So I'm going to do a little uh, hacky way for that. I'm going to go to my open customization menu function. And in here, all the way at the beginning, I'm going to add an input and that's going to be a boolean. And I'm going to set a reset buttons only. So this will not open and close the menu, but this will only reset all of the buttons. So first let's grab a branch and make sure that we plug this in. And from the false pin, we're just going to continue like we did previously. So for the true pin, uh, no, that's not really true by the... Yeah, that is true. We're going to continue like we did previously. And for the true pin, we can actually go to our close function so close customization menu and we can copy everything from the for each loop all the way to the return node so we don't want to mess with the widget switcher but we do want to reset all of the button arrays and things like that so we're going to copy this and then go back into our open customization menu and we're going to plug this into the true pin so if we want to reset the buttons, we're going to make sure that we get rid of all of the buttons. We empty all of our arrays and then we're going to plug this into the local variable setters. So we're going to start setting up the new buttons again. And now we can simply call this from the customization button pressed event. So if we selected a new model, we're going to call the open customization menu. And this time we're going to reset the buttons only. And that should be good to go. So we can hook this up to a return node. And now all we need to do is pretty much the same thing, but then for the skin buttons. So we're gonna grab a branch over here, hook it up to the false pin. And this should be a model button if it's, or a skin button if it's not a model button, but whatever, let's hook it up to a branch. And then we can kind of copy all of this stuff. So let's grab the first part, all of this. So the for each loop with break and then to the completed pin set style and set is enabled. And we're gonna paste it over here, plug it into the true pin. So we want to loop through all of the customization buttons, but this time we want to check if we are a skin button. So drag of the array element, a get is skin button and plug it into the first branch. Then we want to get the skin name instead of the model name. So let's make sure we do that, get skin name. And we want to compare that to our skin name on the player profile. So let's make sure we change this pin as well. Then we can break the loop, that's fine. And we want to set the button to the default style and re-enable it so we can keep all of that. And there's no loose ends in here, so that should be good to go. And then we want to do the same thing like we did here. So we can grab the second for each loop and we're going to grab it all the way up to the save selected model node. Copy it and then paste it over here. So again, we want to get the skin and the skin name. So we could copy those from here get rid of the model thingies and paste in our skin thingies and hook up the targets. So if we are a skin button, we want to compare the current skin name to the skin name from the input node. So let's drag it all the way to the beginning and plug it into the skin name. And then we're going to break the loop and set the active button style and disable the button. So that is Good, and then we're going to call our menu function or menu controller function. So grab the menu controller and save selected skin. And for this, we want to grab the skin name from the input node. So that will be this pin 
and plug it in here as well. And this time uh, we do not need to mess with any other buttons, so we can simply go to the return node and we're done in here. So compile and save this, and that should be all for the customization button. So um, next let's take a look at the menu game mode to make sure our lobby character actually updates. To update our lobby character, we need to go into our menu game mode. And in the event graph, we have the update selected character event. So we're going to go all the way to the back of the event over here. And let's start where we get the data table row name or data table row. And let's disconnect this. And I'm going to get another data table row. So get data table row. And this time I want to get it from my character customization table. And for the row name, I'm actually going to plug in the character row name from the getter over here. So we can simply use that. And then we can break the return structure from here. And this will give us all the information we need. So uh, let me see. For this, we want to drag off the mapping and we want to find the actual model that we are using. So we're going to plug in the model name from the player profile structure again and then this will return the model and skin structure for this model so again we can break the result and there we have all of the variables that we need so now we can plug in the model that returns from the structure into our multicast set character mesh and we're not going to use the character mesh from the character info table anymore and uh, for the play mesh animation, we can simply leave it as it is. I might move over the mesh animation to the customization structure and then just keep the character info structure for all of the other stuff. But that's just a whole other story, not relevant at this moment. Um, so what we need to do now is check if we need to set up our skins. So we're going to grab a branch in here and plug in the use skin zero value and make sure that we hook this up. So if we want to use this skin, then we want to make sure that we actually set it. So we need to get the correct skin from the skin mapping, drag off here and do find. And we're going to find it from the structure for the player profile again. So we can simply plug in our skin name and that will return the actual material instance in the mapping. So then all we need to do is create a multi guest event on our lobby character so we can set that material. So if I would double click over here, I'm going to open my lobby character and then let's create a new custom event. And this will be a multicast set uh, skin material. So multicast set skin material. And make sure that we set it as a multicast event and i'm gonna enable reliability as well because again we are in the lobby so these events won't fire like on tick or whatever so uh, there won't be any issues with making this reliable so for the actual event that's going to be pretty simple we're going to drag in our character mesh and we're going to set a material and with the set material node in place here we can simply uh, drop the variables onto the event node and those will be created for us now we can compile and save so again if i go back to the viewport select my mesh over here we have the element 0 and 1 indexes and those will refer to the element index on this node and also to the element index in our data table so now we can get our lobby character so that's from this pin over here and we can simply call our multicast set skin material, plug this into the true pin and get the element from the array or the element index from the array and the material from the find node and do the same thing for the second material over here. So let's get another branch and another event, plug this in and also plug this in. So if we use the second skin slot as well, then we're going to use the slot from the data table and we actually want to find the correct skin from the mapping again so find and plug in the same skin name from the player profile structure and the material can be plugged in here
So this should update our lobby character and that should be good to go. Now uh, all we need to do is make sure that the actual character that we spawn in game also updates. So let's take a look at that next. So with my parent and child blueprint setup, I only need to go into my base character and in here I'm going to add all of the uh, variables and functions that we're going to need. So first of all, let's create two new variables and the first one is the model name. So that's a name variable and you want to make sure this is replicated. So set it to replicate and then we're also going to need one for the skin name. So let's duplicate it and this will be our skin name. So this also needs to be replicated just to make sure. Now let's create a function. So go here, create a new function and call this uh, set model and skin. And uh, we're not going to use an input. So let's drag off here and get a table row name or table row. I keep saying table row name. I don't know why. And we're going to get our character customization table and plug in our character row name that we already have in our uh, variables. Then we're going to break the result again and that will give us our mapping. So for the mapping, we're going to drag off here and find and we want to find the model name. So we're going to drag our model name variable in here and then break the outcome structure. And that will give us the model and the skins that we need. So first of all, we're going to set the model. So grab our mesh in here and set the skeletal mesh. Plug it into the row found pin and get the model from the data table. And then we're going to do the same thing that we just did for the materials. So let's grab a branch. And if we use material slot one, then we want to set the material for the mesh. So drag off the character mesh and set material. Plug this into the true pin, get the index from the data table and find the correct material by getting a find node and plugging in your skin name. And the return value is the material instance that we're going to use. And do the same thing again for the second material slot. So copy and paste it. Plug in the false pin and also continue from the other node. Get the boolean, get the index and we want to find it from our skin name. So we can plug that in here as well. And this should actually work if we plug in the target into the mesh component and that's good to go. So with this Function in place, let's go to the event graph and we have created our own multicast begin play and the normal event begin play would also be a, a quote unquote multicast. So in here we're going to call our set model and skin function directly. Uh, so we don't need to make this an actual multicast or replicated event or anything because this will make sure it executes on all of the instances of our character. So this should be good to go as well. And now if we go into our shooter game mode, so let's compile and save this. And open up our framework shooter game mode. So in here we have the spawn default pawn function and we want to make sure that we're going to store our model name and skin name as a local variable again. So right click promote to local variable and this is the local model name. And do the same thing for the skin name, local skin name. So we want to set them over here. So make sure you hook everything up. And then copy and paste them in the other branch as well. There we go. And then after we spawn the character, we can simply set them. So we are in the game mode, so that means we are the server and these are replicated variables. So if we set them over here, those will replicate to all of the other instances as well. So we're going to simply set the model name and also set our skin name. 
and we can use the local variables that we just created. So plug those in here. And that should be good. Now uh, there is one tiny other thing that we want to take a look at. So let's close down our character and we want to open the game instance. And in here, um, if we change our player name, we actually overwrite some stuff again. So for the model name and the skin name, we want to make sure that we plug in the values from the getter. So we do not reset anything when we change our player name. And then that should be good as well. So I think at this point we could try and test this. So let's keep our fingers crossed. So I need to actually enable the main menu map and make sure that it's on the correct monitor, but I'll get to the, there we go. So first let's have a look single player. So let's host the game and go into our character selection menu. So right now we only added the actual row for Quinn Blue. So we can only check Quinn Blue. And if we press any other button, nothing will happen because uh, I didn't set up the data table for that yet. So let's go to the customize and now all the buttons appear. So that's good. If I click mail, nothing happens. So that's not good. And the skin button also isn't working. And I know why actually. And the back button isn't working as well. Okay, so for the skin button, that's not really weird because we need to go into our customization button. And in here, we still need to add our on clicked event. So if we're going to set the uh, grab the button and get an on clicked event. And for the on clicked event, we want to grab our character menu and call our customization button pressed function. So customization button pressed and then for the variables we can simply uh, get them from here so plug in the is model button model name is skin button and skin name and that should actually make something happen and now the back button why would that not work um, well, let's worry about that a little bit later. So let's see, multiplayer, host game, and then select character, blue Quinn selected, customize. And now everything is screwed. Okay, I'm gonna check out what's wrong and get back to you guys. Okay, this wasn't too bad actually, a few small things. So first inside the character menu, we have the open customization menu function and inside the array element, for some reason the array element is not connected to the remove from parent so make sure you connect the target to the array element otherwise it closes down the menu so that's what happened earlier and the same thing in the close customization menu so for some reason these pins didn't get connected i probably forgot it myself but whatever so those are done and then uh, we need to go into our menu game mode and over here, I forgot to hook up the execution pin from this to back to the set character mesh node. So that's why nothing happened when I actually pressed the button. And I also didn't plug in the target for the set skin material for the second node. So that will be the lobby character. Compile and save this. And now everything should work actually. So let's give it a go in a standalone game. So we can load in uh, both players with a different character and we can see if everything is working as we expected. So loading standalone, so this takes a little bit longer, but we're getting there. So here we are. So the first one, multiplayer host game. And then my second one, multiplayer search game. So it's already on a different model because I just tested if it actually worked. So there we go. 
Um, let's select a new character. Again, I only have Quinn Blue set up in my data table, so I can only mess with Quinn Blue. Uh, for this one, I'm gonna make it the male model, and then I'm gonna give it the purple body. So you can see everything updates for the client as well. So I'm gonna select this character for the host, and for the client, I'm gonna keep the default female, and I'm gonna make her uh, red. So, uh, we messed up the materials, so this is probably Quinn material number one, and this should be number two, or the other way around, so that's why the material looks weird, but the actual functionality of the customization is working, so all we need to do is change the material in the data table. Um, so this is good, now let's go to the seamless travel enabled and start the game and see what happens. So we have a male character in purple and we have a female character in red. So we are good to go with our character customization. So again, a pretty long video, but I think it was, it was worth, it, worth it, okay. <laughs> so we have a nice data table and inside the data table we can just set up all of the models, skins and things that we want to use and we don't need to worry about anything else. So I hope you enjoyed the video and hope you enjoyed the result as well. If you did, please consider leaving a like and I'll be back for more soon. Thanks for watching guys, later.